AP, they have to deal with this quite a bit when we deal with acids. And uh, so we could have an acid that's dilute. Yes, sir. Oh, you want me to move it? Is that five now? Right there in that one. You tired today? You can't. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to move it back there, but for now, I... all right. Um, we can have a we can have a uh, a dilute concentration, which means a dilute concentration means we just don't have very much of it to begin with. Like, if I took this acid here, this is hydrochloric acid, and I take one drop of it put it in to just regular distilled water, that would be a very dilute concentration, right? be mostly all water and one drop of an acid. That would be extremely dilute, okay? Now, if I pour the whole thing in, then that would mean it'd be concentrated, right? It'd be more concentrated, more molarity. The higher the molarity, and we've dealt with molarity last chapter, then... Um, the stronger the concentration is, not, it's not a strong acid. It doesn't mean it's a strong acid, okay? So by definition, it breaks apart 100%, and I'll show you what that looks like when the formula. So the strong acids are HCl, hydrochloric, HBr, hydrobromic, and HI. Where do you find all these anions at? CLBRI, where are they at? The halogens, right? The only one that's not on there is that F. HF is a weak acid. Right? So then we've got three more to work with. <coughs> we have HNO3, nitric acid. We have H2SO4. The first hydrogen that comes off is breaks apart 100%. So the second hydrogen doesn't. But the first hydrogen here will break apart 100%. And then the last one is HClO4, perchloric. Now the book puts in their HClO3. I'm going to have to check on that. They don't have HNO3, but they have HClO3. And we've always um, identified our strong acids this way. Any questions with that? So let me show you um, how we would write out a reaction that breaks apart 100%, okay? We're just going to write it out, how it breaks apart 100%. So, HCl, when you put it in water, is going to break apart in H plus, plus Cl minus. Any questions with that? And there's an arrow there, just one arrow. Now, if it doesn't break apart 100%, we'll talk about how you would represent that. We're going to get into what's called oh, um, equilibrium reactions, and uh, we're not going to get in too in-depth into that, but that's a big part of chemistry that in AP chemistry we've done for the last month, month and a half, dealing with uh, reactions that don't, Basically, the reactions that don't, they're not completed. This is completed. It's 100% it breaks apart into that, H and Cl. So the rest of them will do the same. All right? The rest of them do the same. HNO3, we'll give you another example. Now, there's a problem students have. They, they start breaking these apart in H and then N by itself and O by itself. But this is nitrate, right? It's nitrate. That's how you name it. You name it off the nitrate. So it breaks apart into H plus plus NO3 minus. Any questions with that? All right. So the light bulb here we're going to use here in a second, but we've got to go through what weak acid is. What weak acid is. Any questions? Weak acid. Everything else, so if you memorize those six, then everything else is a weak acid. Everything else that's written out, you'd say weak acid, weak acid. 
acids. It's just those six that we considered strong acids. Okay? So these just partially break apart. They don't break apart 100%. In fact, they, they break apart, if we're lucky, 1 or 2% of them do. So out of 100 of these molecules, only 1 out of 100 or 2 out of 100 actually break apart. The rest of them stay together. Okay, the rest of them stay together. So the way you would symbolize that, we're going to take acidic acid. No, we won't take acid. We'll take nitrous acid, H. NO2. And we're going to go ahead and show two arrows, one going forward and one going back. And then we're going to show H plus and we're going to show NO2 minus. Okay. So weak acid will be double arrow. And if you had to show it, that's what you'd show, a double arrow. And this is what happens, okay, in a container that we would have. I should have used HF, it would be easier to do. I think I would use HF. So we'll just have HF. I'll give you another example. HF is a weak acid. Right. So then what happens when I put HF in here, this is what it's going to look like in the when we look at the molecules. Okay, and I put a bunch in there, and hopefully you can tell the difference. There's a lot of HF molecules that stay together, right? But every once in a while, you'll have an H plus and an F minus come apart. Any question with that? So weak acid, you show double Because basically what happens is the, the, if an HF does break apart, it probably gets back together, and when it collides again, it forms an HF molecule. It stays an HF molecule. Okay. Let me go back to the previous... Previous screen, and I'll show you what HCl would look like. So, if we would do, do HCl, we put in, uh, HCl in there, this is what it would look like. See, they're all broken apart. <coughs> they're all broken apart. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that now with a demonstration. So that's when you have a strong acid, strong base, you've got neutralization. Now, what we're going to do is a little different. We're going to do what's called a net or a complete ionic equation. So we're going to go complete. ionic equation. So everything that's an AQ, we're going to break apart. Okay, everything that's an AQ, we're going to break apart. So H plus breaks apart. H plus BR minus. Questions? Right. Then the NA is going to break apart. And the OH is going to break apart. And that's what it's going to look like. So this is, this is completely new to you. Anything that's aqueous, we break apart. Then we're going to show our arrow. Water, H2O, it's a liquid. We don't break apart. Okay? We don't break apart water. So it would be H2O liquid. Keep it together. Right? NaBr, we break apart. <coughs> Any questions right there? So anything that's an ion, we break apart. Now, just like in math, 
Sometimes you can go through an equation and you can cancel out numbers and symbols if they're on both sides. Okay, so which ions are on both sides that basically what we can do just like math, be an equal sign, that we can get rid of? Okay, okay. so Na and Br we get rid of. They are called spectator ions. So um, when you look at this, your Na positive and your Br minus are called spectators. They're not really involved in the reaction. Okay? In ABR, they're not they're like got people in the stands watching. They don't get out on the mat, they don't get out on the court of the football field, they shouldn't anyway. Okay? They are spectators. They're watching the action. What's the action? H plus and OH getting together. So then, what we do is we do what's called a net ionic. H plus gets together with OH minus to make water. In uh, AP Chemistry, this is how they write all the reactions. They don't write a reaction like the top one. They get rid of everything that really doesn't matter in the reaction. The sodium and, and Br, they don't, they don't, they're not involved. They're just floating around. They're bystanders. They're just kind of looking what's going on. These two get together and they do the reaction. Any questions with that? Okay, I'm going to give you one that's a weak acid, strong acid, or I'm sorry, weak acid, strong base. Any questions with that one? So I'm going to have you practice some of these for tomorrow. All right. and this will continue on for the next couple of weeks. You're going to write molecular equation, complete ionic, and then ionic. Okay. So, last one we're going to do, we'll do a weak acid. And a strong base. So everything else, not those six, will be considered weak acid. So, We'll take HF. That's an easy one to work with. So we'll take HF aqueous plus we'll take uh, KOH aqueous base. We've got that OH on the middle. It's going to make what? Water again, liquid. Plus it's going to make KF. And if you look, KF, by when it uh, it dissolves. So if you look on your solubility chart, KF will dissolve. Okay, so this is a molecular equation. Okay, what's different uh, between these two is this. HF does not break apart 100%. So if I have to write down what HF does when it goes into solution, let's go back to that slide so that I can uh, tell you what it is in the aqueous portion of the solution. Um, when we go back to that drawing of HF, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. <laughs> I know I did it. When I put it in there, what did it break apart into? It, just a few, like, like one out of every hundred or one out of every two hundred broke apart. It stays in the original form, HF. It stays in the original form. You cannot break it apart in this portion. I can't break apart HF. It doesn't break apart. It's still aqueous. It's still in a solution form, but it doesn't break apart. So here's the problem, I, and I, AP students struggle with this too. They think they need to break apart every acid, 100%. Well, HF doesn't break apart. So if it's HF uh, aqueous there, it's not, going to, it's not going to break apart. So you leave it as HF aqueous. All right, so leave acids together, all weak acids together, all the way down. So 
So then we K, K plus plus OH minus. That'll break apart just like it did because it's a strong base. Strong bases are like strong acid. They break apart 100%. Then we form our water, H2O, plus we form our KF. But it's, I have to do it as ions because that one breaks apart 100%. So it's kind of like we have these two liquids, they go together, they react, but HF doesn't break apart. But the H will come off when there's OH is present to make water. So then, this is called the complete ionic. Now what we do is we cancel out the spectator ions. Which is the spectator ion? K plus. That's a spectator. Now we write it exactly like above taking out the spectator ion. So the net ionic is taking out the uh, spectator. So it's HF plus OH minus gives you H2O plus F minus. That's a bad grade, F minus. Okay. Questions. Now, I get, you know what, strong, a uh, strong acid, strong bases are really easy to do. You know what the answer is always going to be. So, just, just to review real quick, and then I'll give you, I'm going to give you a few of these to practice. Just a few. Okay. So, let's go back and look at our strong acid real quick, and then how that works, works out. Strong acid, strong bases always end up like this. They always end up with H plus OH minus gives you H2O every single time because everything else is a spectator ion. Okay? But when we go to um, ones that are not considered that way, they'll, the, the weak acid stays together all the way down. Strong base will separate. Strong means they'll separate 100%. So these are the three I want you to do for tomorrow. You can put these in your notes. Okay, when you do them. Okay, I'm going to have you do HClO4 plus KOH. That's one. Two, I'm going to have you do um, H. BrO2 plus NaOH, and then and then you'll leave some space. I hope, hope as you know, you got to leave some space to do all three of those. And then three, we'll have you do um, are all aqueous. Now tomorrow, I'm going to show you titration off of this. So tomorrow, I'll show you what you're going to be doing next week, starting, um, starting on Tuesday. So next week on Tuesday, I'm going to show you, physically show you what you're going to be doing in lab for Thursday, Friday next week. And maybe Monday of the following week, depending upon how things go. Okay, so do those three for tomorrow. Okay, you guys got about 10 minutes. First thing you have to recognize is what about this? If it's a strong acid or weak acid. Strong acid, you do it like the strong acid, strong base. So weak acid, you do it like weak acid, strong base. Okay? You go ahead and do those. For tomorrow.